<laughs> All right, welcome everybody to our, what a college class might look like info session. Um, we will be talking a little bit, tiny bit much um, in the beginning part of it, but we will have a QA and a at the end to so make sure um, you're holding off on, the, on your questions until then, but we're going to go ahead and get started. So hi, everyone. My name is Diana. I use she, her pronouns, um, and I'm a rising second year. I'm both a political science and English major, and I also have an urban education minor. Um, my hometown is Santa Cruz, California, so not too far out from campus. And in terms of favorite classes for college, it was definitely my poly two class or comparative politics. And for high school, it was English two, which is like the one that let me know that I did like English and I wanted to do something with that in the future. Okay, and then hi everyone, my name is Caroline. I use she, her pronouns and I'm a rising junior. I'm a communication major and an English minor. I'm from Winneka, Illinois, and my favorite class in college was definitely CTW. Um, so it was like a two quarter class. So you really get to know the professor and everyone in the class. And it was just really fun. It was really super interesting. And my favorite high school class was statistics. It was definitely a lot easier than when I took statistics here in college. Um, but it was just fun. And I feel like it's so pleasing when you're doing those like math equations and they balance out perfectly. I don't know. <laughs> um, and then since after, since we just did our introductions, we would love to get to know you all. It is a little bit of a bigger group. So maybe if you wanna just put in the chat, your name, major, your hometown, and a class that you're looking forward to at Santa Clara. You don't have to be like registered for it yet. It could be like, I don't know, like for me, I'm really looking forward to taking like an art class one day, like maybe a painting class, um, but yeah. So we'll give it a couple of minutes, let you all type those introductions and put them into the chat. Oh my gosh, that was really fast typing, Hayden. <laughs> Good job. Oh my gosh, so many like different majors going from music to engineering physics, crazy. French. Oh, Alex would be a good OL to connect with. She's a French mm -hmm. major. Oh my gosh, Polly too. <gasps> I hope you enjoy it. Polly too is really fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Psychology classes are also really fun, Naomi. I took one. It was pretty good. Bro, looking forward to Polly one classes are really fun as well. Cultures and ideas. That's a good one. Yes. Calc. I'm also kind of scared though. <laughs> Math classes are a lot like less intimidating than they seem. I will say that. Um, you'll you'll be more than okay, Maddie. CTW, Caroline, your people. That's <laughs> I know that's so awesome. <laughs> All right. I feel like we can probably keep it going. Feel free yeah. to keep typing it in the chat. Um, get to know each other a little bit. But so the way that we've structured the first part of our presentation is to sort of like give a brief overview about what classes look like based on the college that you all are in. Um, Caroline and I are in the College of Arts and Sciences. So naturally we have a little bit more intel in these two, but we did get some pretty good and specific insight from our um, Levy School of Business and um, School of Engineering friends. Um, so we have some very detailed slides for that as well. And we have some wonderful OLs who can share more specific experience regarding those if y'all wanna reach out. Uh, but to get started with uh, College of Arts and Sciences classes. So they tend to be a little bit more on the discussion-based side of things. Um, even so, though, we always recommend to be prepared for lecture classes as well, just because there's always those outliers. Um, but yeah, CAS classes tend to do a little bit of a mix of the two. They will teach you some material and then they'll have you discuss it with the class. Um, attendance has been shown to be a big part of your grade. Um, this may come in the form of having its own category. So maybe attendance being 10% of your overall grade, or maybe it's part of participation. So like attendance plays into that percentage 
um, that your participation weights in on your grade. So pay a little bit of attention to that. Uh, CAS uh, professors tend to really value your attendance. Um, in terms of the assignments, we would say to expect a mix of papers, exams, and projects. Some professors may do all three. Some of them may gear towards two or maybe towards only one. Um, and what we mean by projects is presentations, info videos, or PSA videos that you create with a group, um, group papers. Um, and like I said, some of these projects may be individually based. Some of them may be a little bit more group based, but those are the type of assignments you might be seeing. Yeah, and then just to continue um, what a CAS class might look like, I feel like they're pretty reading heavy. Um, I feel like the, mostly like on a weekly or daily basis, the assignments that I would get would be mostly reading. And it's important you need to, you're expected to be able to talk about these readings. So even if the readings, if the professor assigns something that's optional, we would still recommend doing it um, because it's great to be able to talk about that and just come prepared with, you know, notes on the reading or just a couple bullet points of things to talk about, things that stood out to you or were important, um, just because you want to have some discussion points if they're, if you're talking about the readings. Um, and we would also say that questions and participation are really valued by professors. So whether they're asking the group or the, they're asking the class a question about their reading, if you're the person to raise your hand and talk about it, that's awesome. Or just, you know, asking clarifying questions or deeper questions about the meaning of the reading. That's really great. Um, and then for any of you that are in more STEM classes, we would say to expect homework that consists of practice problems, worksheets, discussion boards, and weekly assignments and quizzes. And then you won't be doing many presentations or like giving them, but if that does happen, you can expect them kind of at the end of the quarter as kind of a final little thing. All right, and for our LSB students, um, so the way that classes have been shown to look like is that they're a little bit more lecture based. Um, so maybe try to prepare for that and like finding a way that you can stay more the most attentive towards the material so that you can enhance your learning. Attendance has also been noted to matter, just like for College of Arts and Sciences. I would always look at the syllabus just to see how much it matters. Sometimes it might be 5%, sometimes it might be 15%. So just make sure you're checking that out. Um, presentations and business casual outfits are actually very common. Uh, so maybe come prepared with that business attire and like, you know, a way to brush up on your presentation skills. Um, expect group projects and the use of interactive textbooks. So if y'all haven't done much of interactive textbooks yet, they're usually like online platforms that will give you the reading material. And then they'll have like additional activities such as like tests or quizzes or simulations that will put that reading into practice. Um, the homework tends to consist of practice problems, particularly in the lower division business courses. And also there's, there's lots of reading involved. Um, and an advice that we got from one of our uh, business OLs was to maintain good relationships with professors uh, because it can help uh, for future recommendations or for building connections for future opportunities. A lot of uh, business professors are retired and they um, have many connections with different businesses or different organizations. So it could help uh, with networking activities. And then one reminder that we got to give you all as well was that every uh, business student is required to take business seven in the fall um, and making study groups for that class can be very helpful. And then moving into the School of Engineering classes, what they might look like, we, uh, we asked our engineering OLs for some information um, and they said that each class kind of differs. So this might be like day to day or course to course. So here are some things that you could expect. Some classes might involve lots of lecture, um, and then with a little bit of time to do examples and little questions mixed in or group projects um, or labs and labs are used to ensure that you're keeping up with the pace of the class and the material that you're expected to know. Um, and then for coding classes, you're likely to go over theory and then use the lab period to kind of use the code and implement these theories and coding stuff during the lab. Um, and we were also told to tell you all to expect lots of formulas and you should do example problems to really understand these formulas. And if a situation arises where you can volunteer to do examples in class, definitely do that because 
the professor wants students to kind of try out doing these problems and it's going to help you see if you're doing them right or if you're not and how you can learn. Um, and then additionally, you'll get problem sets that will either lead up to a test or relate to the material that's on a test. Um, and an OL advised that handwritten notes are typically better than typed notes in your engineering classes. Um, and then also just to go to office hours for help on tough homework problems or if you're not understanding some of the course material. All right, so now we're gonna break down um what a class may look like into different sections. One of the first one is getting to class. And we've done a little tab of what it looks like and some advice that we've come up with to help you all navigate all of this. So the first thing that we wanna know is to know where your classes are and how far they are from your residence hall or whatever hall you're taking a previous class in. Um, I believe we do have an event coming up today about do you know where you're going, which I think will go over the distance and like where certain buildings are. So that might be a good place to start. Um, and I also want to say that probably during welcome weekend, you have a or like once you move in, you have a lot of time to explore um, and see which buildings um, your classes might be in. So take advantage of that. Um, the reason why, you're, you sh why you should know where your classes are so that you are able to get there on time. Uh, professors will often start right uh, once the class is set to start and they might not be letting latecomers come in. So if they're unaware that you're gonna be late, like if you haven't communicated that to them for whatever reason, they might not let you go in and you might not be able to take the class. Um, and also they might be making announcements about upcoming events or assignments in the beginning of class. And you don't wanna show up the next day to class to know that you have a paper like two days from then. And you're gonna be like, I didn't know about this, um, but they had announced it that day. Um, and then some advice that we have for this is that be ready to take some notes. Um, so make sure that you're bringing paper, computer, whatever it is that it's easier for you to take notes with. Just come prepared with whatever course material will make learning easier for you. Um, and pick, pick a seat that works for you. Uh, seats are not assigned um, in most college classes, but it is kind of like an unspoken rule that whatever seat you pick, it tends to be the one that you're gonna like stick with. Um, so try to pick a seat that works for you. And if it doesn't work for you and you need to change it for another day, it's not the worst thing in the world, but just try to keep that in mind um, and make sure that you're getting out all of your materials um, or readings or anything that you might need in class. Show your professors that you're prepared. Okay, and then getting into what attendance and introductions might look like, it kind of depends on the professor. Some professors will do um, attendance at the beginning of class because attendance is mandatory and counts for points in your grade. While for some classes, attendance is not mandatory, but this does not mean that you shouldn't go to class. It still means that you should go to class because there's lots of valuable information. Um, some professors will do like a roll call out loud and have you say here. And then I've also had some professors kind of pass around an attendance sheet where you sign in. Um, and then many professors have icebreakers or like discussion questions to kick off class. And it's really great to participate in these and just kind of get yourself warmed up because definitely those are like the most easy questions are being asked in the beginning of class. And I feel like for me, it's better to kind of start participating right in the beginning. So I'm comfortable doing it all throughout the class rather than being like so scared to participate in the like last little part of the class. Um, and then just some advice. Even if attendance is optional, really try to keep up with it. It matters. There's so much information in the class and professors do notice. They notice who's there, who's not there. Um, and so if you want to make a good impression on them, definitely try to be there for a majority of the classes. Um, and yeah. All right. In terms of the well-known lectures and what they may look like. Um, so professors uh, will typically be presenting on information that you're either already learned about through readings or any assignments um, and just going deeper into those concepts or you will be learning more information in addition to that. So try to be prepared for both. Either way, as you can see, like readings, doing the readings and those assigned assignments is really important because the knowledge is, or the information is very much connected. Um, some professors might be lecturing throughout the whole class period um, while others may lecture for a little bit and instead stop for questions, value more participation in our discussion. Um, you might see a trend that typically the professors that tend to be more lecture heavy might not 
count participation so much towards your grade, whether whereas those who value participation and lecture less might be more um, might put more weight on participation for your grade. So maybe keep an eye out for that. And then don't expect every professor to make use of Google Slides or PowerPoints. Some professors tend to be a little bit more traditional and they don't like to use slides. So they might just like lecture based on notes that they already have. And so you wanna be prepared to take those type of notes. Um, so yeah, just keep a heads up for that. And also not every professor will be sharing slides with you. So make sure you're keeping an eye out for that and just uh, get to know your professor's style of teaching right away. Okay, and then for our part two about lectures, just some advice. Some professors will upload their presentation and notes online, but you still need to take notes. I feel like a lot of the presentations and slides that professors do upload are just pretty basic bullet points, and the real like meat of the presentation and the important stuff is what they say out loud. So you kind of want to be taking notes on that and not just like if they have a presentation, you don't just want to like copy down word for word what's on there. Um, and just it's really important to pay attention just stay like obviously attentive to like what's going on in class it's a lot of important information and because everything they say isn't recorded or uploaded and won't be accessible in the future so the only way that you can really see that information that the teachers have presented is through your notes um and also don't be afraid to speak up and ask questions if you need clarification or if you're just confused whatever you have a question about don't be afraid to raise your hand and ask I've had a lot of professors who enjoy when students ask questions in class, whereas others will kind of want questions at the end of class once they're done lecturing. So if professors don't want you to ask questions during the lecture, write those questions down and still definitely ask them um, because the questions aren't just gonna answer themselves. Um, some teachers will like cold call and just randomly select students to call on, whether it's to like answer a question during class or anything. So you need to know what the teachers or what the professor is talking about because you don't really wanna be cold called on and just say, I don't know, because it's just a poor reflection of you as a student, because obviously we are all intelligent and you really wanna show that to your professors. Um, and if your professors talk too fast, just try to write down the most notable points. I think even if professors did talk really slow, you still would not be able to get down every last bit of information. So when they are talking fast, when you can't get everything down, just write down what seems important to you, things that are maybe new concepts, um, you know, yeah. And one last thing is that lectures can get boring. So try to find something that will enhance your attention. Maybe that could be drinking water, taking notes. I found that it's really helpful to have like a ring or a bracelet on and kind of play with that when I'm having a hard time paying attention. But definitely do not resort to playing games on your computer or texting your friends or checking your email because that is a really great way to get distracted in class and not enhance your attention. Um, and if you wanna be paying attention, you're not gonna find that through like playing solitaire because I've definitely fallen into that trap a couple of times and it is not a good path to go down. Okay, in terms of discussions, um, in case you encounter them, um, so professors who choose to uh, use discussion within their teaching style during class, the way that it might look like is that they might ask the whole class a question um, and then wait for people to respond. This is when where maybe cold calling might come in if um, not a lot of people are showing enthusiasm to participate or they may assign you to groups to talk about the questions. And then once you come back, you share as a whole the like main insights of that group discussion. One new thing that you might, might encounter is discussion posts. So many of y'all may know already that we use Camino as a platform where we can access all of your class materials, all of our classes, um, submit our assignments generally and things like such. Well, in Camino, there is a feature for discussion post where professors can post a question uh, for the whole class. And then you have a chance to answer that question in a post that potentially everybody in your class can see eventually. Um, and often as part of this discussion post assignments, you will be required to respond to classmates post. Um, these may happen once a week, this may happen twice a week. So just keep a heads up. They'll usually um, announce that in the syllabus when you get it. Some advice for that is that participation is expected by professors. Um, 
try to be thoughtful and use your knowledge uh, to the best of your ability when you're in, when you're uh, participating. This is why doing readings and all of the homework assignments is important, like we've stated. Um, and it's okay to be wrong or to have different thoughts than others. You're not expected to know everything or for the common consensus to be your consensus. So long as you're keeping things respectful and trying your best, you will be okay. Professors will appreciate the effort. But this doesn't mean that you should participate just to participate and to get points. Um, they will know when you're putting in a genuine effort or when you're not. And they will also be aware of when you've done your readings and when you haven't. Uh, we know that doing readings or like completing them all the time can be a little bit tough and you might not always get a chance to. Um, so just try your best. I think if you're putting in your best, there's nothing that could go wrong. Okay, and then moving on to group work and what that might look like in college. Um, I found that group work is somewhat common in my classes and it is definitely not my favorite thing, but there's no way to get out of it. Um, so group work could be a paper, a project, a video, or a presentation, or just like in class, I've had the professor will assign a couple questions and you'll work with the people in your row and answer those questions and be expected to talk about them in front of the class. Um, and for grading group work, it could be collectively, individually based, or a mix of that. Um, most commonly, I feel like it's like partially it'll be one grade that everyone gets, and then the group evaluations will play a pretty big role in the individual grading. And so with group evaluations, what happens is that everyone in the group kind of like fills out a little like Google form or something just about how much other members participated, if they did well or if they didn't. And it's important to be honest on those because it's the teacher's not gonna like tell the other students that you rated them poorly. And like, if someone really didn't do their share of the work or didn't show up to meetings or anything like that, you can give them a poor rating because that's the amount of effort that they put in. Um, and I think group evaluations are a really great motivator for me at least to be working super hard on group work, just because then I know that I'll be getting high rankings or high ratings from my other group members. Um, and don't expect meeting times to be organized for group work from your professor or don't expect to be given class time to work on group work. It generally, group work happens outside of class and you have to find a meeting time. Uh, and then just for some advice, don't wait for others to take initiative. Um, it's hard because you know you really wanna be in the group with someone who's gonna make the group chats and who's gonna set the meeting times and is gonna like split up work evenly, but sometimes that has to be you and that can be difficult, but you might need to do it sometimes. Um, and when you're working in a group, not all students will wanna do work, but you still need to turn in something. Um, I've been in some group projects where students, you know, they just don't wanna do their share. And then I end up having to do like double the amount of work that I should need to do. and it's annoying because it just takes time and it's really not my work to be doing, but I think I care more about my grade than a couple of hours of time of doing work that's really not mine. And so just be aware that an uneven distribution of work might happen um, and you know, that's okay. And one last piece of advice is just to be organized and stay on top of things and stay on track. It's really easy to lose track of time when you're given a big group project at the beginning of the quarter and it's do during like week five or week eight. And you're like, oh, we have so much time, but you know, it's really great to kind of start meeting at the beginning of when it's assigned, get things out of the way so that you're not all like scrambling to try and get something together right at the end of when it's due. All right, and in terms of the always crazy and often feared papers that we write in college, um, so some professors might rely a lot on this, some they not, some, sometimes it might be just dependent on your major. Some majors are typically more writing heavy than others. Um, but some general things that we've noticed in terms of what papers look like is that we should not expect for outlines for paper structures to be provided by professors. I know in high school, a lot of times we would get like a paper of an outline about what we would put on the first paragraph on the introduction, what we would put in a body paragraph, how many quotes we needed, or things like such. Some professors might loosely tell you what you need and be like, oh, this is how many citations you need. This is how many paragraphs you should have. But rarely will they be too detailed about that. So, and if they are, that's great, but don't expect it to be the norm because it most likely won't always be. Um, so maybe these outlines will be up for you to create um, if they're helpful in your writing process. If they're not, then you can just not use them. 
And more than often, the topic that your paper will be about will be completely up to you. Um, you'll just be given some sort of broad parameters regarding it. I know that for one of my papers, I was asked to write about how uh, technology had impacted an area of education. I got to pick um, which area of education that was and which type of technology I was going to address. Um, and sometimes that's all you get. Sometimes all you get is a topic. Um, and then page lengths can vary from one page papers up to 15 pages or even more. So expect a range of those just because one class gives you very short papers doesn't mean the next class will. Um, and typically, probably as you get from lower to upper division courses, you will see an increase in that page count. Um, papers do tend to be worth a considerable portion of your grade. So you wanna make sure that you're putting a bunch of effort into them. Um, and just keeping in mind, you know, how much you need to make a good use of them. And then formats may differ from class to class. And what we mean by formats are MLA formats, APA, Chicago style. Um, so, and you are expected to learn how to use each. I always recommend using Purdue. Um, it's always a good resource and like it takes you step by step for the in-text citations, a bibliography and things like such. Um, so just expect those styles to change. Um, in terms of advice, we just want to let you know that professors are willing to give help or advice. Just make sure you're asking in a timely manner. Um, don't expect them to help you on the day before the paper is due or when the paper is due. I know I did that once and it did not go too well for me. Um, and know that this type of help and advice comes in different formats. Sometimes professor will be open to discussing the paper, but that's it. Other professors might be willing to read your entire draft and give some pointers there. So there's a range there. So be mindful of what type of help uh, they're willing to provide. And then the expected quality of writing in high school and in college is very different. You'll learn early on that your writing needs to adapt to the way that your professor likes for the writing to be like. Um, so you might be writing differently for two different classes and your writing might be changing depending on that. And that's something you wanna keep an eye out and try to start early. There's a lot that goes into writing a paper, research. You might run into some complications. The more time you allow yourself to have to actually write it, um, you're setting up yourself for better success. So give yourself the time to actually write a good paper. Okay, and then talking about exams, I feel like I was very, very scared of exams upon coming to college. Um, we'd say that exams can be multiple choice, free response, true, false, anything like a combination of these. And generally professors will have told us what the exam is going to look like, or we ask and they will tell us, um, which is nice because I feel like the way I would pre prepare for a multiple choice exam is way different from like having to write two short essays or something. Um, some professors will only have exams in the form of a midterm and a final, so twice a quarter, while other professors might give exams more frequently, like every two weeks, every three weeks. It just depends, depends on the professor and the course that you're in. Um, and then kind of what you're tested on during exams, again, it really depends. And generally teachers will specify this, or you may ask them to specify this just because it's really important to know what's gonna be on the exam just so you can study correctly. Um, but you could have reading material on the exams, lecture material, videos, presentations, pretty much anything. So it's important to clarify that because you don't wanna, you know, like walk into the exam, only have studied, you know, reading material and then turns out you're being tested on the the professor's lectures. Um, and then just for some advice, be aware of the studying methods that work best for you. It might be uh, making physical note cards using Quizlet. Uh, I don't know, making a study guide. I like to make myself little practice tests and practice questions, and that's really helpful. Um, and if you don't understand the material, you should definitely ask for help. Um, I feel like whenever I'm confused and I don't ask like clarifying questions that ends up being on the test. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I totally should have asked. Um, and so you could definitely ask your classmates just like after class one day, whoever you're sitting next to just be like, hey, do you understand this topic? Like, can you help me out? Um, and if they don't know, ask the professor. Um, and then one last thing is that taking notes is definitely a part of studying. And this makes the quality of your notes super important. 
Um, I feel like when studying, you mostly base your study materials off of your notes. And so if you have really poor quality notes where you just like weren't paying attention in class, there's gaps in the information, it's going to be pretty hard to study and get all of that material studied on. So, you know, try to make your notes high quality and have all the information that you have in class. And then also consistently reviewing your notes is a really good way to just study. If you look at them for five minutes every day, doesn't take a long time. And it's just really hammering that information into your brain and you're gonna know it well, and you're gonna remember it. All right, so you've reached the point where you've left class. Um, so what does it look like once you're leaving class? So professors will always let you know when it's time to go. Uh, don't expect class to end always on the time that it's scheduled to end. Um, some professors might end a little early. Some professors might end a little bit later and get a little bit more carried away with the class material or if there's a lot that you have to cover in that uh, specific class that day. Um, so just be mindful of that. If you do have a class right after, maybe make your professor aware and be like, hey, I know sometimes we run a little bit late for class. Is it okay if I always live in the middle of the lecture because I have this class to get to right after? And most of the time, they'll be very understanding of that. Um, and make sure that you're paying attention to announcements if any are made at the end of class. Some professors might do this in the beginning of class. Some of them might do it in the end of class. Some of them might do it both times. Um, so just keep an eye out. Sometimes they'll announce like other assignments that are not present in the syllabus. Um, changes can be made, so pay attention to that. And try to not start packing up or leaving until professor the professor has actually dismissed you. Um, it can look a little bit wonky if you're just getting ready to go and you're like, I'm done with the class for today. Um, they will notice, so just be mindful of that. And also be mindful of when it's the right time to ask professors questions. Some of them may not able to be to stay after class to talk to you all the time they may have classes right after um, and they might be like just go to office hours or shoot me an email some of them may be able to stay for a whole hour talking to you about your paper's topic so just try to be a little bit um, aware of that and the way that you so that you can uh, get the best amount of help if you're asking a quick question perhaps after class is the best way to go but if you need like good extensive advice on your paper, then maybe office hours is the way to go. Okay, and we're just gonna look at this tentative grading scale. Generally, this is what my professors have used for um, calculating our like grade percentages to letter grades. Um, it can differ in every class. It just depends on the professor. In some people's classes, like a anything from like an 85 to a 100 is an A. Uh, it just depends on the professor. So it's important to know that, but this is the one that's kind of like typical, I would say. Um, and then just something important to take note of is that an A minus holds different weight on your GPA than just an A. So if you have an A, you're gonna have like a 4.0, but if you have an A minus, it's gonna be a little bit less. And the same goes for a B plus, a B, a B minus, and all of that. And feel free to take a screenshot if you want to of this, but you will also get these grading skills from your professors in your syllabi on like the first day of class, first week of class. All right, and we've reached the time for questions.